Good morning, folks. We've got an update on our long-range earthquake prediction, top science news as well, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were relatively calm. We began to see the bright active region incoming from the left. We saw it at the opening, and those arches are surrounded by plasma filaments dancing around the corona. Filaments and umbral magnetic fields mean sunspots, and this is actually the departed one from 12 days ago, spinning all the way around back into visibility, using Stereo A here to get a glimpse behind the incoming limb at what's coming into our view next. Solar wind here. A bit more variability, but down to slightly lower intensities, means geomagnetism is all calm in the green right now. But look at the blue panel. We're now five days past due for a phi angle shift, what we use to predict short-term quake upticks, and we're two weeks below average at the magnitude 6 level. Eye on the phi to set that watch, and more on the long-term magnitude 7 alert at the end of this video. But let's quickly mention Costa Rica, Poas volcano gaining incandescence overnight, and in Seattle, they have officially broken that snow record to join many of the cities north of the border and to the northeast. This first science article is a double whammy. First, it is official that there are two kinds of planetary systems, ones like ours, and ones with water worlds. This is the final piece of the star water principles we outlined in 2013, and this universe is teeming with it. But also we learn that we are not such a system because we once had another massive star nearby. They say it went nova and delivered the heavy elements and isotopes we find around the system, and which allows our Earth to have the most water and yet still not be a water world. Up next, we have a graphic showing the change to leaf size area across the planet. Brown would be bad, reduction, while green is good, larger leaves. Your eyes can tell you the rest of the story. Up next, the biggest story of the day, a second impact crater has been found near Hiawatha Crater in Greenland. This one, they say, is either over 70,000 years old or the ice sheet shifted on the landmass of Greenland to cover it up. This one is said to be much more weathered and under the ice known to be older than the young Hiawatha. Up next, it looks like Pico 60 Bubble Chamber has their major dark matter search report in, and I'll give you two guesses as to whether or not they found it. Bet you only need one. Same goes for the Snow Lab, which puts a larger damper on Princeton's Argonne experiment since it was supposed to deliver a good bit of hope for that group, which has also seen goose eggs on the scoreboard as well. Just a quick reminder, episode 17 of Earth Catastrophe Cycle came out yesterday. It is a must-watch. And now let's get to the large earthquake prediction from late January, still going strong now. Now at that point in January, we were already a week overdue for a magnitude 7 earthquake, statistically but we said we had more than a month to wait for an uptick based on the solar polar fields. We have not yet had one, let alone an uptick, and we are approaching that time here now when we were looking forward to back at the end of last month, and we are 44 days since the last magnitude 7 earthquake, when one is expected about every 20 days. In addition to the next above average period, occurring within about a month, we are now going to be more focused on the location forecasting too. This is where Blot Echoes, the Global Electric Circuit, and QuakeWatch.net really come into play, especially during the time when we expect those fields to have their spring peak to the negative. Whenever the fields do have that peak is when we would expect the magnitude 7 uptick, perhaps magnitude 8 as well. So not only are we going to be trying to nail the timing and location of the events, but if, retrospectively, the solar data does not agree, we would have to discount those hits. Getting close to that time now, many factors in play. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.